Hi everybody, Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings here with a fun little project. Now I'm taking one of these, I'll insert a picture of what it looks like before. This is just a cheap plastic, believe it or not, see how the word step two in there? It's just a little plastic vanity, a kid's vanity. So if you wanna have fun learning how to paint, you can paint pretty much anything. So with this, since it's plastic, all I need to do is make sure that I cleaned it really well and then rinsed off all my cleaner, as always, like we do with normal furniture, and I'm putting two coats of a bonding primer on it. Now today, I'm gonna be using Slick Stick, which is our bonding primer. This is going to help anything stick to, uh, you know, as far as paint sticking to plastic, to glass, to metal. Um, this is a bonding primer. A lot of you have heard of bonding primers such as like Zinser 123. I personally like to use the Slick Stick one. It's formulated to be used with the chalk-based paints, like I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint. Um, but also, it doesn't have that harsh, as, as harsh of a smell as some of those other companies that have the bonding primers. So I do like to use Slick Stick for that factor. But I'm gonna go ahead and get a coat of Slick Stick on here. You paint it on just like you would um, as if you're painting a piece of furniture. And this is going to make your piece have a great paintable surface. Take my lid off it, I had to get a new one because I ran out. Okay, so I'm using a synthetic brush. And the reason I'm using a synthetic brush, you can use a natural bristle brush, but I like to use a synthetic because I want to have a smooth finish. Um, I don't want to leave a bunch of brush strokes because I haven't decided how I'm going to paint this. I think I might do the Mackenzie Child whimsical with some pastel colors, fun for kids. Um, but I want it to be smooth. I want my paint when I put my next coat on this, um, after I've got it all primed here with the bonding primer, I want to have a smooth surface for my paint to glide on. So I'm going to be very mindful. I'm not gonna slap on uh, my primer I, or my slick stick. I am gonna put it on nice and smooth. Now you can, since these are, this is a water-based product, if I find that it's drying quickly and I'm getting drag marks or I want it to thin out a little bit, you can mist your brush that allows it to thin out a little bit. Your product goes much farther, you use less product. Um, but also you reduce the chance of having brush strokes. So I am going to just get two coats of primer on here, which I'm using Slick Stick, and I'm gonna let it dry 24 hours before I put paint on it. I wanna make sure that this has had a chance to dry and bond to this plastic, because I know kids are gonna be playing on this and they're gonna be rough on it. So I wanna make sure that my bonding primer has had 24 hours to dry before I paint on it. Now between coats, I'm just gonna wait probably two hours between coats. I'll put on my first coat, I'm gonna wait a couple hours, two, three hours, I'll come back out here and I'll put my second coat on. But I'm not going to actually start painting on this with my actual paints, which I'm using Dixie Bell's chalk mineral based paints. I'm not gonna do that until it's had about 24 hours to grip on and, and bond to this plastic surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and paint this and we'll come back and we'll make it pretty with the, uh, I haven't decided on a color scheme yet, but keep watching. Okay, I'm back. The Slick Stick has had um, 24 hours to dry. I have two coats on it, so it's nice and it's a great surface to be painted on now. Once again, Slick Stick is a bonding primer and this is a plastic, plate, uh, plastic piece. So right now I'm gonna be putting on a base coat of fluff and fluff is just um, a nice tone of white. It's not like a stark bright white, but it's a nice soft white. I'm gonna be putting a base coat of white on here and then we're really gonna have some fun and dress this up. Okay, I do have a misting bottle and, uh, with my paintbrush. I'm using a synthetic brush, gives me less brush strokes, but I'll use much less paint if I mist as I go because that thins the paint out, allows it to level and be smoother with, uh, you won't have the, the brush marks and I want a nice soft surface um, or finish. So I'm gonna be using water, I'm gonna mist, mist my piece, a little bit of water and just paint away. I am using a synthetic brush. I always like to use a synthetic brush when using chalk-based paints. Uh, this is a chalk mineral-based paint, uh, but I like to use a synthetic brush. It does give you a smoother finish. Okay, so I have a base coat of fluff over my primer, and that is because I'm planning on doing some type of harlequin pattern up here, so I wanted the white as the background. And I know white is the same color as the primer, but you, you always want to put paint over your primer. You don't want to use primer as just your, your regular paint. 
Um, so I did put a coat of the white, which is fluff, over the primer. And like I said, it'll be a Harlequin here, maybe some stripes here. I'm gonna really kind of go for a little bit of a wild, whimsical, Mackenzie Child type feel. And then on the sides here, you can see this pattern. See this pattern right here? I'm going to take advantage of that pattern. I'm going to actually, I think I decided on using lots of primary colors or purples and reds and yellows and oranges. And so I'm gonna do purple as my base, but then I'm gonna come in here and each one of these hearts, I'm gonna do like a different fun, whimsical look on every one of these little hearts to give it some character. So I'm gonna take advantage of this print here and use it as part of my design. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix together. I'm gonna to mix together aubergine, which is a deep, deep purple and paint blue, and it's gonna give me a gorgeous lavender. Now you can pick a lavender color that you want, but I'm going to mix my own. Okay, so I got my lav the lavender mixture on, and you notice I went way out of my lines on these areas. The reason I did that is there's a recessed ridge. I wanted to make sure that recessed, the, the lip of all those recessed areas had a coat of paint on it. Now I'm gonna be painting all these little decorations in different colors, and then I'll be coming back and I will be outlining them all probably in black. Well, I didn't want the white showing through. If I didn't hit an area with the black, little bits of white would be very noticeable. But this base color of the lavender won't be as noticeable if I don't get all the way up to a certain line. So in all these deep areas that I'll be outlining in black, I did put the lavender down. It makes it easier for my final detail work. I don't worry about being nice and neat until I do the final detail work. So right now I'm just having fun putting the colors on. It's like a coloring book. There's one of the hearts. Like I said, I'm gonna let that dry. I'm not worried about my grooves because I'll be putting black paint in these recessed areas after I'm all done, which is gonna clean it up. So now I'm gonna pick a new color for each one of these little hearts and just have some fun. Okay, so I've got the details kind of painted on some of the areas that I want. And when it comes to fine line details, here's a little trick. Now that I got my base colors on, now I know I'm gonna be painting in the centers. I'm gonna add polka dots and stripes but I'm gonna protect the paint that I have on here now. And the reason I'm saying that is chalk-based paints are porous. And so if I clear coat all of this now, and I'm gonna use Dixie Bell's Satin Clear Coat. If you use a clear coat, water-based clear coat now, and just one coat, you seal all this off. That way when you come in to do your details where you have to be very precise, if you happen to get outside the line, you can wipe it up with a baby wipe very quickly, and you're able to, um, uh, wipe off basically any mistakes that you make. Like I said, I'm gonna be using Dixie Bell's Clear Coat in Satin. And when doing a clear coat, um, since I have all these details, I can't use a roller, I'm not gonna use a sponge, I'm gonna use a good synthetic brush. And so I'm just going to apply it all over this piece. Just get a nice coat of clear coat on here. And let it dry, I'll let it dry for a couple hours, and then I'll come back in and I'll show you, I'll be putting in the fine details. Okay, so my clear coat is dried, and, and I'm showing you close up because I want you to be able to see why I put a clear coat on before I do my final details. And I wasn't worried about how nice and neat I was because I'm gonna be outlining this all in black. But we don't want to have to worry about being precise and nice and perfect. It's gonna take us forever. So we clear coated it so that we don't have to worry about that. So now I'm going to take my craft brush and just get that paint in there. Not worried about if I get it where I don't want it. I'm just making sure I get up to those ridges. I'm being extra messy just to prove a point. So as you can see, I can come right up, right up to that edge right here. Because no one wants it. When we do fine line detailing, it is stressful to hold your hand nice and smooth to get right up to an edge. But if you do the clear coat first, and then come back and do all of this stuff, you don't have to worry about it. So you're gonna, we're gonna do small sections, and then, since this is water-based paint, and it's, we use a water-based poly acrylic, Dixie, I use Dixie Bell's clear coat. Okay, so see how I outlined that? Then I'm gonna have baby wipes handy. So I'm gonna take out my baby wipe, I put it on my finger, and I'm just going to ride all my edges, 
and clean them up. The paint comes right off. See, especially over here, how messy I was over there? I can take my baby wipe, just ro keep rotating on my finger because so you don't smear paint. I'm just gonna ride it along my edge in a straight line, right there. And you're basically, since I have that clear coat on there, I'm wiping the paint off wherever I don't want it. So if I went out of the lines, I can just wipe it up. Okay, I'm gonna ride this top edge here with my finger and clean up any paint that got where I didn't want it. So, when you're doing fine line details, clear coat your piece first. This is gonna save you so much time. I'm gonna do this hard part in here and I'm not gonna be careful, I'm just gonna get that paint in there. Get it up on that lip in there. Get it around. Um, because I know like doing Harlequin and doing um, checkerboard and, or using a stencil, we always have to clean up anywhere we have bleed under our stencil or our brush accidentally got outside the lines. Look at, I'm not even being careful. It'll save you a lot of time doing this. Okay, so, so see? Okay, I moved in a little bit. But you can see how I got black. I'll even be more exaggerated. Let me just really just kind of get this on here. Just getting that black around there. Not worried about, you know, how nice and neat I'm doing it. I want to get up on those all those little edges. Get around this little area. Okay. So I've got a lot of paint outside where I want it. So I'm going to take my little finger inside the baby wipe. And I'm going to clean that all off. I'm just riding the edges of everything. And this is plastic, so there is some kind of like funky divots here and there from the mold making this plastic piece. And I'm going to wipe across this little circle here to clean that up. You can do this with um, like trim on a piece of furniture where you want to maybe just do a gold stripe on a raised piece of trim then, or pinstripe down a piece of furniture on a raised edge, uh, just clear coat it first, and then come in and do all this little stuff. Look at, I'm just wiping, and getting that little smooth edge, see if my little circle's smooth now? Now along this whole bottom, I went way outside of the edge. Keep rotating my baby wipe so it's clean, and I'm just wiping right along that edge. Boom. That is how you do pieces like this. And granted, I picked a kid's piece, but just because this kid's piece had a lot of different things to demonstrate. Paint and plastic, doing fine line detailing. I'm gonna be doing a stencil on the top. So I was able to show a lot of stuff on this piece. That's why I just picked it. Just a fun little piece there. See, nice and neat now. Okay, now for the next tip, I'm putting stripes. As you can see, I'm putting stripes around the entire front so it looks like a Mackenzie child. And I've done up to this point right here. So what you need to do is, you're gonna take a piece of tape and it's gonna be your spacer. So you're going to put your spacer down, tape, lift up your spacer, go to the next spot, tape, and that's how you get even lines. Next, you're gonna take a clear coat. Any clear coat you want, whether it be um, or sealer, a water-based polyacrylic. I use Dixie Bell. Um, you put the sealer on your lines. So I'd be putting a clear coat of satin. I've already done that, so it's dried. So you just wipe satin clear coat or flat clear coat, whatever clear coat you're using. Wipe it along your tape. And what that's going to do is that's going to seal down your tape and prevent uh, any bleed throughs. But if I do get bleed throughs, because this is a rounded surface, so my tape does have difficulty in sticking in certain spots. If uh, you do get bleed throughs, remember, we clear coated everything earlier. Remember when we were doing, um, we did our base coats and then I put the uh, sealer on it. Uh, my clear coat in satin. I put that over the entire piece. That way, if I do get bleed through, then I'm gonna be able to come back with the baby wipe and wipe it up and, and get a very clean line. So now I'm going to paint my stripes. And I'm just gonna go right along that tape line. Usually when going black over white, um, you will take two coats. Now, you don't wanna push and drive that paint under the tape by going this direction. You wanna go with your tape 
up and down. And I'm not worried about this top line up here because I can clean that up with a baby wipe. Okay, so I'm just gonna get this paint on here. Going in the direction of my tape so I'm not pushing the paint under the, my tape. Nice smooth lines. Okay, this will dry in just a matter of a couple minutes and I'll be able to do another coat. We go on to this next one. I'm just using a craft brush. Any craft brush works. Going right along my tape, straight down, so I'm not pushing any paint under my tape. Even though I have a clear coat of satin on there, um, I could get a little bit of bleed through. So that's not a problem because I'm going to be cleaning up all my lines with my baby wipe. Okay. So I got one coat on those. I'm gonna let it dry for probably about 10 minutes is all. And I'm going to then come back with my second coat. But before I let that dry, I'm gonna take my baby wipe and just clean up my top edge. Wipe along my edge so that I have a clean line. See? And I wipe right, right along my edge here. Get to a clean spot of my baby wipe and just wipe it across this edge here. There we go. So I'm gonna have a nice smooth top edge because of the baby wipe, it's already been sealed. So now I'm just gonna let this dry and put my second coat on and then I'm gonna show you my next tip. Okay, for another tip is, let's say you don't have a straight line with your paintbrush. You can get acrylic pens. Paint, these are paint pens, I love to use these. This is um, by Zay, um, Zayar, I will put the information down below. These are acrylic pens and they have paint in them. So if you do have an area, and I'm gonna zoom in real quick. Okay, my next tip and trick for doing a whimsical look is if you have um, you know, lines and you just couldn't keep your paintbrush straight, you can always clean up your lines by using acrylic pens. Now these are by Zayar, I'm not sure. Um, I, I, I purchased these, I actually do like them. I got them off Amazon, I'll put the link down below, but these are I like acrylic pens where you can apply your paint. But I don't know if you can see here, I'll take close up pictures. I put a silver dot at the tip of every one of those Harlequins. I outlined the Harlequin with a pink to give it a little bit more um, added color. And it also gave me a clean edge on my stencil though. So you see I have all, it'll make cleaner edges. So these are acrylic pens. It's one way to clean up all of your lines. I'm gonna show you this in just a little bit. So that's one of the tricks is let's say you just you can't get a, a clean line all you do is you use these acrylic pens they are okay they're like an acrylic almost like doing a marker but it's actual a, it's paint and um, to get them started you push on them and that primes the paint down into the tip and look at the it gives you a beautiful like metallic these are metallics so if you did have an area that you just couldn't get a straight line with your paintbrush or you needed to clean something up you can just take this acrylic pen and go along your edges and you can clean them up so if there's certain edges that you just couldn't get clean a nice smooth edge you can use these acrylic pens to tidy up and straighten your lines if you need to so that is one trick okay my next trick this area right here. Okay, my next trick is, let's say you don't want to do any fancy painting or you don't want to take the time to do all the hand painted stuff. One, like I said, I recommend using a stencil. Two, you can use a transfer. These are image transfers and I didn't have to hand paint any of this. I just applied these. These um, I got from Dixie Bell. These are from their Bells and Whistle line. This one happens to be called Latin Floral. Uh, but you apply them directly to your paint and then you seal over them and they're good to go. I'm gonna apply one on the chair to decorate the chair. Okay, so I have my chair and it's kind of boring but I don't wanna take the time to hand paint anything. So I took the transfer, it comes in many sheets. I cut apart just the, the images that I want and I'm gonna show how easy these are to apply. So I've cut this one up so that it fits right where I want it to. So I'm gonna just put a flower on here. I can't put it in the center because I have that little divot of a logo. So this, is, uh, this paint has been on here over 24 hours. You take the backing paper off, backing paper off, and you have, you have your sticky side and you have your regular side. Don't get your fingers on the sticky image. Those, the images right there, don't touch that. And just lay it down where you want it. Position it. And I think I want it just right, right there. 
And then once you get it in the position you want, you press it down. They come with a little applicator tool. You're just going to rub them. Now since I cut these apart, I'm really close to my edge right here and I don't want to scratch my paint. So you can take a piece of plastic, whether you have a plastic bag, um, you know, a sheet of plastic. I'm going to use the a sheet, leftover sheet from one of the other transfers and protect your paint while you're rubbing, especially when you have uh, your image so close to the edge. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. See like right there, I cut that image and it's so close, there's not much plastic on the outside to protect my paint if I'd happen to slip with my, uh, my little tool here. So, I just lay this down to protect that paint and I'm going to rub. You're gonna rub all over the entire transfer and then we're gonna go back and pull this up. And you go over and do one quick run over, I mean you rub all over the entire piece just to get it started and then we're going to start um, pulling up the plastic protector. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. So rub along all my edges. I'm just using this little plastic so I don't actually slip and scratch my paint. Okay, so now I got it started. So now, I'm gonna zoom in. Okay, so now I'm going to start working at an edge and I'm rubbing. And I don't know if you can see my finger. I'm making sure the image is completely releasing from that plastic. If you go to an area and you're rubbing and you're pulling it up and part of the image is staying on this plastic, see, see how clear that is? If any of the image was left on this plastic, you'd wanna set it back down and start rubbing again to make sure that you are rubbing it to release it from that plastic. So I'm going slowly with my finger, kind of pulling up the plastic and laying it back down if I need to, if, if it's not completely letting go, the image from the plastic. See how quickly I'm doing this? Use my finger as a guide and rubbing in front of it. Making sure that none of the image is left behind on the plastic. Like I said, if it is, I need to set it back down and rub it some more. Okay, so this is just another trick if you don't want to have to hand paint a design, find a transfer that fits the theme and the colors that you're going with. Like I said, this one is the Bells and Whistles line from Dixie Bell, and it's called Latin Floral. And you can cut them apart, just take the pieces that you need, save the rest of it for another project. There's like four sheets in a package. So there's lots of little corners and flowers and edges and designs to, uh, that you can choose from to fit whatever size project you're doing. Okay, and there we go. Okay, now you need to burnish it. And burnish it just means making sure there's no air pockets and that it's completely secured down. And what I like to use for burnishing, what I like to use for burnishing is just get a lint-free cloth and rub over the entire thing, making sure there's no air bubbles, making sure that's locked down. Rubbing all those edges. Okay, here we go. Okay, so I've decorated that chair that quickly. And then I would go and put a poly, a water-based polyacrylic to seal this in. I personally like to use Dixie Bell's clear coat in satin. That's my first choice. So after you got your transfer on, you do need to seal it to make sure it, stay, it stays put and it's not gonna go anywhere. You do not wanna use any oil-based products to seal this. So that's why I like to use um, Dixie Bell's water-based clear coat in satin. So that's what I'll be sealing this with. If you don't have a rag, you can just burnish with your finger, go over that entire transfer. Make sure every inch of it is adhered to your furniture piece. If you have an air bubble and you leave it, you have to take a chance of it lifting over time. Okay, so there we go. So I have the flower on. Those are my tips and tricks for doing whimsical. Okay, well there you have it. This cute little project um, and all the tips and tricks on painting one of those pieces that you think is not a paintable piece. So get out your plastic, get out the glass, get out the metal. Uh, you can pretty much paint anything and I showed you all the tips and tricks to do it. Um, now what little girl would not love to have this cute customized little vanity? Um, no longer looks old and it's refreshed and has a cute no new little look. 
I'm excited about it. Okay, well my name is Amy with AJ's Vintage Designs and Fashion Toppings. Make sure you click on the like, subscribe, and that little bell down below so you're notified every time I put up a new video. And I will put a picture of this at the end as well. This was a fun piece and I hope you enjoyed this project. Oh, don't forget, all the products are listed down below in the description box. Just click on show more down below and you'll see all the products I used.